birth of Jesus. You know, there's some controversy over is Christmas really this time of year or not. And, you know, that's great. We, but we can all choose to celebrate today because it's the day we've chosen to celebrate. So uh, I, I love that. And uh, as I was praying and I was asking the Holy Spirit, what is it that you want me to share with your people? You know, as, as you know, many people are going to be here and they're going to be visiting. And, and I felt like the Lord gave me the word rejoice. You see right above me, right? Up there in, uh, on the slides. The word rejoice. I want to take a look at the word rejoice a little bit today. And uh, it starts off in Philippians 4, verse 4 through 7, okay? Look at this. It says, rejoice in the Lord when? Always. Always. And will, I will say it again, rejoice. It says, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And what? The peace of God, you know, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, Christmas can get crazy. Some of y'all need some peace. The peace of God needs to what? transcend all into your understanding so that you can know the peace that God has. And that's what I want to share with you. You know, what is the biblical definition or, you know, of rejoice? I, I, I looked at that. I like to break this stuff down and even go to the dictionary. I went to the Merriam-Webster uh, dictionary and, and the word rejoice means to give you or, you know, to feel joy or great delight. Does anybody like to feel joy and great delight? It's way better than all the other stuff like, you know, anxiety and fear and all that stuff. But we want to feel great delight and that comes from joy. Well, I want to share with you a little bit today about what joy is so that you can know the true way to experience joy in your life. You know... Uh, you know, the scriptures say that rejoicing in the Lord means to have joy or delight in the Lord and to feel joy when you think of him always. So when should we be thinking of God? Always in everything that we do, whatever it is that's going on in our life. Well, you know, pastor, my life isn't always great. Sometimes things happen in my life that I don't like. But you know what the Bible says? You know that in all situations we can have joy. He said it, Jesus said it himself. In this world you're going to have trouble. But be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. So what is God saying? He's saying even in the midst of a life that has chaos and, 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 and issues in it. You can experience joy because there's a secret weapon of joy. And it's found in the person of Jesus Christ. When we know Jesus, we can know joy. Say amen. amen. You know, because here's the bottom line. We get all weighed down with concerns, don't we? That's what our life feels like sometimes. You know, like we're just walking and the weight of the world's on us. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think about it. Like the last three years. Let's just stop for a minute and go. The last three years. It's crazy. It's been crazy. I mean, even in my own life, uh, you know, a lot of you've had health issues. You've experienced problems with your health. And, and uh, if it wasn't the health, it was your finances. You struggled financially. You had things and obstacles come up. Man, maybe you lost your job in the COVID thing or you got sick and you lost some of your health and, and, and you've been struggling in, in some areas. And then we don't even want to talk about inflation, do we? I went to Ryan's this week to, to get food, and I, I was like, man, I really want some chicken wings. And I looked down, and the eight-piece eight wing was $17.99. I'm like, that's two bucks a wing. Two dollars a wing. I was like, you better give me all flats for that price. Where's my flats, people? All right, all right where's my drums? Yeah, I'm both. I'll eat either. I don't care. 
But the bottom line is this, the world's changing around us right now. If you can't notice that and see that the world is changing, you know, then we need to help you, you know, just get over to the men's or ladies group and we'll pray for you uh, here at the church. But the world's changing, you know, I had some major health issues about three years ago and uh, I, I was just hanging out. It was this time of year, actually, it was just as the new year was approaching and it was uh, you know, I went to a conference for a missions conference and then I came home that night and I'd eaten at Denny's. So I thought I had food poisoning, you know, sorry, Denny's, but, and I didn't have food poisoning. My pancreas exploded in my body and you don't live through that. Well, most people don't. I do. You know why? Right? Because I have Jesus in my life. Okay, but, you know, that's just it. But God delivered me in that moment. You know, I spent 32 days in the hospital and six months on a feeding tube in my bedroom. But you know what? I never lost my joy. I never lost my, my joy because my joy wasn't in my circumstances. My joy was in Someone, not something. And even in the midst of all this trouble and all these things that were happening to me, I still had Jesus and I knew where I was going if I did die, but I kind of refused to. And the Lord was like, I'm with you on that one. Still got stuff for you to do. He, I had no idea it was Lighthouse Church. <laughs> right? I mean, I didn't. But, you know, I trusted God and in, in my, my joy carried me through those tough moments. You know, God even restored my finances, man. I had a $978,000 medical bill. <laughs> it all got wiped, my insurance, and they just wiped the rest of it. We really did get an amazing financial breakthrough in that. So I'm only telling you these things to say, if he'll do it for me, he'll do it for you. If God's going to restore me from, you know, sudden death, he'll deliver you as well. Whatever it is that's going on, we already took care of that a minute ago. So you're already being set free and delivered under the anointing of, of the word of God that's happening here today. So what are you facing? I know many of us have lost loved ones, man. I've seen a few people this week that they're struggling, man. They've lost loved ones. It's their first Christmas without that person. You know, there's marriages. There's people that have been through divorce. There's people who've lost spouses. You know, they've lost their jobs or their careers. And, and they're financially not sure what's going to happen to them. And the holidays can be a sad time when you let your focus be on what's happening to you. But see, that's not what we're called to focus on. We can rejoice in the fact that we know Jesus Christ in our lives, that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And in that, we can rejoice. We can have extraordinary joy and be happy and excited even in the midst of everything else that's coming at us. And the world will look at us and they'll go, how do you do it? What is different about you? I need what you have because they need Jesus. And when you have Jesus, you have the victory. <laughs> so if you're dealing with heaviness and you're dealing with depression and Things like that, you know, the, the, the only way that I truly know to lift that off of your life is to rejoice in the Lord. No matter what you're facing, rejoice in him. All that's temporal, it'll fade away, but he it will be with you in the midst of everything that you're going through. I mean, if, if you're not able to rejoice and you're feeling weighed down, and you're feeling depressed, and you're feeling, you know, like my life is empty, then somewhere along the way, you lost your joy. You see, you know, there's a difference between happiness and joy. We talked about this in, in this past week in a series that we were doing 
here at the church and the journey of faith. Uh, but I, I shared this and I knew there'd be some people here that weren't here for that. So I want to share this one more time. You see, there's a difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is rooted in the word happen and things that happen to you make you happy. But see, joy is a totally different game. Joy is from the Lord. The joy of the Lord is, 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 is your strength. That's in Nehemiah 8.10. It's the joy of the Lord that is your strength that's going to pull you together, that's going to help you to move through those things in life that are coming after you. And yeah, you may not be happy, but you can have joy because you know how to rejoice. And that means you know how to celebrate in who you are in Jesus. <laughs> Isn't that good? You know, think about that. Your situations turn around when you're in joy. You're like, man, I'm not happy, but I'm going to have the joy of the Lord in this situation. And guess what? That situation's going to turn around. It's going to turn around. You know, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I can rejoice in that. I can rejoice in that. My truck could be burning up, and I can still rejoice. <laughs> Twice. Because Jesus is with me, and he's got a pocket full of trucks. Sorry, I didn't mean to pull you out like that. It's true, isn't it? He, he did. He pulled you through, right? Exactly. You know, the Bible says we were once blind, but now we see. I've been blinded in my life. I have walked in darkness, but now I've seen the light, the light of Jesus. You know, we were once under a death sentence for our sins. We were going to have to pay the price for our sins. So Jesus said, no, I'm going to pay the price for you instead. It's incredible. He's like, no, 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 no. Hold on. Unbuckle him. You know? Put me in there. <laughs> See, the bottom line is this. We've been adopted into God's family. And that's what we're trying to do here at Lighthouse is build a culture of adoption. We've been adopted into God's kingdom. And guess what? If you're not in God's kingdom yet, we are and we will adopt you. Come on. We will pull you into our family and we'll show you how to rejoice in the Lord. How to have joy in the fact that you know the Savior, that you know Jesus. And the God of this universe is in your life now. And nothing else that you face can, can take that away from you. And you can have joy in your life. You know, in the, the song Silent Night, right? It says... Jesus, Lord at thy birth. You know that Jesus was Lord the minute he was born. He was Lord. He was our Lord. You know, in our series, we learned that, you know, Jesus became a man, that God became a man. Emmanuel, God with us. He came to the earth and took the form of a man. Look at this scripture in Philippians 2, 7, and 11. As we close, it says, but he made himself of no reputation in taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. It says that Jesus was in the form of God and he humbled himself and became a man and a servant. Even to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, what? Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Isn't that amazing? That Jesus is Lord. <laughs> to the glory of God. So what does that mean? It means that Jesus is Lord. Whether you want to admit it or not, he's Lord. And he's going to be Lord. And everybody, every knee is going to bow. And every tongue is going to confess that he's Lord. And you're going to either do it here and you can get in on the program 
Or one day you will meet God in eternity and you will bow your knee and still confess that Jesus is Lord. So where is this journey of life taking you? Find a, a reason to rejoice in life. His name is Jesus. Amen. Would you bow your heads? Father, we just thank you. We just thank you that we have a reason to celebrate. We have a reason to rejoice. His name is Jesus. If you've never given your life to Jesus, let today be the day that you invite him into your life and invite him into your heart. This isn't a pressure moment where we're trying to make somebody stand up or raise their hand. This is a moment where you get to know and understand that Jesus loves you. And no matter what you do, he's never going to hate you. He's always going to reach out to you. And he's always going to accept you and welcome you into his arms. So make the choice to give God your life. Allow him in. Say, join me in my life endeavors, Jesus. You know, as we go into this next song, we're going to sing Silent Night. Let's remember the holy night when Jesus joined us here on the earth. And he became the greatest gift that any of us would ever receive. Amen. Would you stand with me? Would you take your little candles out? We're going to dim the lights. And let's light that candle in gratefulness to what Jesus has done with gratitude for all that he's done for us. And let's just sing together and celebrate the Lord. Amen. Let's rejoice in him. Sun.